been endeavoring to understand the laws of life in order to answer that greater question, what law is brought into enactment when stillness and movement meet? Wisdom and luck were walking down the road one day when they met one another and got into a rather heated argument as to who was the more powerful. Just at that time, there was a baby born to a very poor woman in a village in India. So they decided between them that one of them would enter this boy's life in order to prove who was the more powerful. Now this boy's name was Rani. And after wisdom and luck tossed a coin, it was wisdom who was going to enter the boy. So Rani grew and he grew to be a very intelligent lad. At an early age he found the village was too small for him so he wanted to set out to find his way in the world. So he came to a town and he approached a goldsmith who indeed took him on as an apprentice. Before very long, Rani was able to do a better job than the goldsmith could do. He was making the most exquisite jewellery, which was sought after by many. But after a while, Rani decided that this was too confining for him, that he could do better going to an even greater city than this. So he made his way to the capital of that realm. Well, there he apprenticed himself to a tailor. And this tailor happened to be the tailor who provided all the garments for the Raja of the realm. And after some while, Rani even surpassed the tailor in his ability to create wonderful costumes. Raja was very impressed. But it was the tailor who claimed that it was he who was creating these garments, not his apprentice. So Rani was confined to being just kind of the dog's body. Now, there was a decree brought out by the Raja. He had the most beautiful daughter, but she was so clever that no suitor that was brought along was found to be chosen by her as a suitable husband. In fact, she was a little bit haughty and she herself made the rule that if there was not a man from whatever status of life he came from who could make her talk, that their head would be locked. But if there was one, she would marry him no matter what. So there was many a prince who lost his head in the pursuit of marrying this beautiful princess. But it came to the ears of Rani. And he thought, what am I doing here? I'm going to remain poor for the rest of my life. I'm going to go and seek the princess's hand. So he went to the palace and presented himself as a suitor 
and one who could make the princess talk. Well, of course, no one was impressed with him because he did look just what he was, a poor tailor's apprentice. But he was brought into the presence of the princess who had a bevy of servants around her to, to check, of course, whether this suitor did in fact make the princess speak. But when Rani entered the princess's chamber, he totally ignored her. In fact, as he looked around, he looked up and saw this beautiful candelabra. He addressed himself to the candle. Oh, good morning, candelabra. Oh, candelabra, I have a small dilemma. In fact, it's somewhat like a riddle. I wonder would you help me with it if I relate it to you? And then he began a story. He said, there was a wood carver, a tailor, and a teacher. And they were not doing well in their hometown. So they decided to set off for more illustrious climbs. But they got a bit tired, night had fallen. But they were in a very wild place. So they decided amongst them that one of them would stay awake and keep watch for wild animals or brigands while the others slept. So it came about that it was the wood carver who was the first to take watch. And it was very boring just sitting there. So he saw a little log nearby. So he began to whittle. And he whittled the form of a woman. Well, just at, as he'd finished carving, it was time for the tailor to wake up. And when he took his watch, he noticed this beautiful creature lying there naked. Oh, he happened to have some cloth and his needle on him. So he made a beautiful garment for her. And just as he'd finished the garment, it was time for him to take his rest and the teacher to take over the watch. Well, when the teacher woke up, he saw this beautiful creature clad there, and when he started to talk to her, she didn't reply. So that's very strange. Perhaps I can teach her to talk. So, during his watch, he did just that. He taught this beautiful creature to talk. So when they all woke up in the morning and there they found the teacher speaking to this beautiful being, they all claimed her for themselves. The wood carved. I was the one who carved her. I am the one who made her garments. The teacher claimed but I'm the one who made her speak. Candelabra, can you tell me which of them was the most worthy? Well, the princess couldn't resist, of course. She had to answer, didn't she? <laughs> well, of course, it was the teacher because he made her speak. But the servants had gone to sleep. <laughs> so they didn't hear the princess's reply. <laughs> so they marched poor Rani out to the execution ground to have his head locked. Well, just at that moment, luck <laughs> he said, what a mess you've made out of this. <laughs> he said, I can do a better job in a couple of minutes than you can do in a whole lifetime. Let me take over. <laughs> so he did.
And with that, and in that instant, a window opened in the turret, in the palace, and the princess came out just at the moment when the sword was about to fall on Randy's neck. She shouted, Stop! This is the man I'm going to marry. He's the one who made me speak. But we know the end of the story, don't we? She was too late. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, if you want him to be salty, you can make it, it was too late. But it's not salty, isn't it? <laughs> That's the other way around. <laughs> so we make up the end of our story. I said, we know they got married and had lots of children. <laughs> but if we take wisdom and luck, and we look at the laws of life and we change those words. Maybe we could call wisdom karma or the law of cause and effect. And we could call luck the will of God or grace or a blessing. A blessing. How then does it fit for us? What is it from our experience now when these are present in our life? Wisdom or the law of cause and effect and luck, grace, blessing, will of God. How has it worked for you? And how does this perhaps allow us to even get a gleaning of that which we seek to answer. What is it that's brought into enactment when stillness, presence, and the movement of life with all its laws, in all its forms, meet? How has it worked for you? Where are you now in this, knowing well as we do the laws of cause and effect or karma? And, no doubt, no question, we would not be sitting here if we did not also know grace the will of God, the Dharma. Do they fight with one another as wisdom and luck did in us? Do we still argue? Concerned, if at all, with the will of the divine. If we answer this question, what is it that's enacted when stillness and movement meet? Never again is there a vestige or a moment of doubt or question for us. So we have need to answer.